Hello. My mom will be right back. She's just getting me some juice because I'm really thirsty. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. to Real Girl Thrift. I am doing a summer read with me series. So we are going over this book, How to Handle Your Emotions, Anger, Depression, Fear, Grief, Rejection, and Self-Worth. I feel like there is so much good stuff in here. We all go through this. So why not try to find some solutions together? I'm going to be sharing my thoughts kind of as I'm reading. And please share your thoughts in the comment because I want this to be a discussion between us, kind of how we deal with this stuff, if we've dealt with this stuff, if we agree, disagree, whatever. So I do say that anytime I'm reading something, even if it's a Christian author, I am going to ask God, like, what is for me and what is not for me? Because I don't believe that even if it's like a Christian writing something, unless it's the word of God, which I believe is true, um, I don't know if everything is for me. So maybe kind of pray that too for yourself. Like ask God what is for me in this, what's not for me and kind of go from there. So if you want to go back and watch the first video, it's where we started this book and we started on anger and we are going to keep reading about anger today. I'm going to pick up where we left off. So each read with me video is going to be about 30 minutes. So you can work while I read to you, you can lay in bed and chill. You can have your morning coffee. You can have your evening treats. I don't know, whatever you want to do. We're going to read and discuss a little bit, mostly reading and thinking. Okay, so we are continuing on anger. Do you have hidden anger? So we're on page 26 of this book, but we didn't read the intro. So we left, we left out that. Many people live life unaware that they have hidden anger, suppressed anger that only occasionally surfaces. While this hidden anger is usually rooted in past childhood hurts, that's deep, the underlying effects are always ready to surface. Ah! For example, when someone says or does something wrong, the one with suppressed anger often overreacts. That is very true. When someone makes an innocent mistake, the magnitude of anger exhibited is out of proportion to the mistake. If you have hidden anger, you find yourself at one extreme or another, from feeling hopeless to feeling hostile, and yet be totally unaware of why you are experiencing these feelings. Feelings? <laughs> feelings. The Bible makes it clear that some of our motives and emotions are hidden from our own view. Who can discern his errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Psalm 1912. That's really good because a lot of our sin and a lot of our struggle, I think, is hidden. So we're not even really aware of it ourselves. And we're not even realizing that it's an offense to God. And I'll do that sometimes. I'll pray like, God, forgive me of the sin that I, this sin that I know of that I do. And then like, forgive me of the ones that I don't know I'm doing. Because I think we can be doing that a lot too. Okay. Clues to finding hidden anger. Do you become irritable over trifles? Trifles. <laughs> Is that like a disagreement? I think so. Do you smile on the outside when you hurt on the inside? I don't think so. Do you find your identity and worth in excessive work? And every reseller said, I know. Sorry. Do you ever deny being impatient? Yeah. Do you have to have the last word? Sometimes. My husband knows. <laughs> Do those close to you say you blame others? Do you feel emotionally flat? Do you find yourself quickly fatigued? Do you have a loss of interest in life? Sometimes. Do you become easily frustrated? Sometimes. 
As the Lord reveals any hidden anger that has taken root in your heart, take action to resolve it because man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. James 1 verse 20. Causes of anger. Imagine leading thousands of people through the desert. They look to you for both their physical and spiritual needs while setting up camp at the base of a mountain. God calls you to climb up to meet with him alone because he plans to give you the Ten Commandments. Page turn. As you meet with God, unbeknownst to you, the people whom God has asked you to lead turn their hearts away from him, melt their gold, mold a golden calf, and then begin their idol worship. God then interrupts your meeting to inform you that your people have turned against him. Flushed with anger and fear, you rush down the mountain to intervene. Exodus 32, 19 describes the scene. When Moses approached the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, his anger burned and he threw the tablets out of his hands, breaking them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. Moses reacted because he was full of fear. He was afraid that God's righteous anger against his disobedient people would result in their destruction. He knew they needed help. Worship God acceptably with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews 12, 28 to 29. What are the four sources of anger? Throughout the world, spontaneous fires can be started and fueled by one of four naturally occurring sources, seeping oil, seeping gas, molten lava, or coal, bed, methane, a flammable gas that can cause mining explosions. In a similar way, anger is typically started and fueled by one of four sources, hurt, injustice, fear, or frustration. Probing into buried feelings from your past can be painful. Therefore, it can seem easier to stay angry than to uncover the cause, let go of your rights, and grow in maturity. Yet the Bible urges us to persevere. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be, be mature and complete, not lacking anything. That's James 1, 4. So that's kind of encouraging, you know, as we fake, fake, face, <laughs> instead of fake these uncomfortable feelings, God is making us more mature and complete so that we're not going to lack anything. So that's, that's encouraging to know as we face these things hurt. Your heart is wounded. Everyone has a God-given inner need for unconditional love. When you experience rejection or emotional pain of any kind, anger can become a protective wall that keeps people pain and hurt away. I've experienced that. Biblical example, the sons of Jacob. Joseph was the undisputed favorite of Jacob's sons. Feeling hurt and rejected by their father, the ten older sons became angry and vindictive toward their younger brother. Israel. Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made a richly ornament robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. That was from Genesis 37, 3-4. Injustice, your right is violated. Everyone has an inner moral code that produces a sense of right and wrong, fair and unfair, just and unjust. When you perceive that an injustice has occurred against you or others, especially those whom you love, you may feel angry. If you hold on to the offense, the unresolved anger can begin to make your home, to make a home in your heart. Okay, so if you hold on to the offense, the anger can get a hold in your heart. So we need to ask God to help us quickly um, forgive and remove the offense. Biblical example is King Saul. King Saul's unjust treatment of David evoked Jonathan's anger. When Jonathan, Saul's son, heard his father pronounce a death sentence on his dear friend David, he asked, why should he be put to death? What has he done? Jonathan asked his father, but Saul hurled his spear at him to kill him, Jonathan. Then Jonathan knew that his father intended to kill David. Jonathan got up from the table in fierce anger. First Samuel 20, 32 to 34. 
fear, your future is threatened. That makes sense because <laughs> when I get angry when I'm driving on the road, sometimes it's because of fear. That makes sense, yeah. Everyone is created with God, with a God-given inner need for security. When you begin to worry, feel threatened, or get angry because of a change in circumstances, you may be responding to fear. <sighs> Wait, let me read that again because I think I need it. When you begin to worry, feel threatened, or get angry because of a change in circumstances, you may be responding to fear. A fearful heart reveals a lack of trust in God's perfect plan for your life. So yeah, I think I do that one. Biblical example is King Saul. Saul became, became angry because of David's many successes on the battlefield. He felt threatened by David's popularity and feared he would lose his kingdom. Saul was very angry. That was read 1 Samuel 18, 5 to 15, 28 to 29. They have credit, Saul was very angry. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought, but me with only thousands. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with David, but had left Saul. That's from 1 Samuel 18, 8 and 12. Frustration, your performance is not accepted. Everyone has a God-given inner need for significance. When your efforts are thwarted or you do not meet your own personal expectations, your sense of significance can be threatened. Frustration over unmet expectations, your own or others, is a major source of anger. Biblical example is Cain. Both Cain and Abel brought offerings to God, but Cain's offering was clearly unacceptable. Cain had chosen to offer what he himself wanted to give rather than what God said was right and acceptable. When Cain's self-effort was rejected, his frustration led to anger, and his anger led him to murder his own brother. In the, curse, in the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord, but Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Now Cain said to his brother, Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. That's from Genesis 4, 3, 5, and 8. Question. This is our Dwight session of the book. Question. What does God want me to do about my inappropriate anger? Answer. God wants you to examine the true source of your anger. Is it hurt? injustice, fear, frustration, or a combination of these. So when we get angry, we ask God, what is the source of this? Then evaluate whether you are using anger to try to meet your inner needs for love, for significance, or for security. Have you been hurt by rejection or someone's unkind words? If so, evaluate. Are you using anger to intimidate or coerce someone into remaining in a relationship with you? Have you been the victim of a real or perceived injustice? If so, evaluate. Are you using angry accusatory words to cause someone to feel guilty and obligated to you? Has someone occurred that cause, wait, has something occurred that causes you to fear? If so, Evaluate, are you using anger to overpower and control someone in order to get your way? Do you feel a sense of frustration because of your unmet expectations? If so, evaluate, are you using angry threats and shaming words to manipulate someone into meeting your demands? In searching your heart, decide that you will not use anger to try to get your needs met. Okay. So that's a good sentence. Not using anger to get your needs met. That's really good. Instead, repent and enter into a deeper dependence on the Lord to meet your God-given needs. So I think, for example, if someone rejected you in some way, um, you wouldn't try to manipulate them or 
use harsh words to them to try to get them to love you and see that they're wrong. Instead, you would take a time out and ask God to meet that need that they were unable to meet. So the Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. That's Isaiah 58, 11. What causes a sudden change of intensity? A person's ways of expressing anger usually change slightly over time and rarely change dramatically. When a major change occurs, there is also a major cause. If someone is uncharacteristically impatient, irritable, or provoked, be aware that changes in mood and behavior can result from drug abuse, like steroids or cocaine, a head injury, like sports, fall, or car accident, medications, certain antidepressants, chemical deficiencies, hormonal imbalance, and all the women know what's up. <laughs> Certain illnesses or diseases, brain tumor or brain cancer, physical or emotional trauma or stress, post-traumatic stress disorder. Suddenly changes of behavior warrant a close examination as to possible physical causes, especially in the brain. Okay, every prudent man acts of knowledge, but a fool exposes his folly, Proverbs 13, 16. Okay, how do expectations lead to anger? How easily to live under the illusion that we can determine what people should do or how situations, situations should be decided. My destiny should be this, therefore people should do that. We pray, and God, we pray and expect God to do everything we ask. The primary problem with such expectations is that it often stems from pride. Ask the Lord, do I act as though I am at the center of the world? What causes, okay, from James 4, 1 through 3 and 6, it says, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. There's a lot to dissect in that verse. Unrealistic expectations, anger towards circumstances. I expected good things would always come my way, but life is clearly not what I expected. I'd expected anger towards others. I expected that you would always be here for me, to always support and love me, but now I'm left alone. Anger towards yourself. I do this sometimes. I expect to always excel, but now I am struggling and feel like a failure. The more we expect people to do what we want, the angrier we become when they fail us. The more we try to control others, the more we control, the more control we give them over us. The more demands we put on others, the more power we give them to anger us. Instead, we need to humble ourselves and submit to God, God's sovereignty over our lives and over the lives of others. The Bible says we need to leave our destiny in his hands where it rightly resides. Find rest, O oh, my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. That's from Psalm 62.5. Question, how can I handle my anger over the losses in my life? Answer, when you experience significant loss in your life, you will go through a time of grieving. You need to admit your feelings, your hurt or sense of injustice, your fear or frustration. You need to release to God all the pain you feel along with the situations that are beyond your control. You need to trust God to give you the grace and insight to deal constructively with each loss. You need to release your expectation that life must go your way. Pray, Lord, thank you that you are sovereign over my life. Whatever it takes, I want to respond to you with a heart of gratitude and accept these unchangeable circumstances in my life. I choose to stop making myself and those around me miserable for something none of us can change. Instead, I thank you 
for how you are going to use everything in my life for my good and for Christ's glory. In his holy name I pray. Amen. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18 it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Okay, what is the root cause of anger? When we feel our real or perceived rights have been violated, we can easily respond with anger. But what are our legitimate rights? One person answers happiness. Another says freedom to have my way. Yet this is not the mindset of Jesus. He yielded his rights to his heavenly father. We do have the right to live in the light of God's will as revealed in his word. But if we want to be Christ-like and not be controlled by anger, we too will yield our rights to the Lord and let him have his way in our hearts. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. I need a drink break. Sorry. Take a drink of your coffee. Talk amongst yourselves. Do a little inner reflecting. Okay, I got to get the water in. Let's pick up where we left off, shall we? Wrong belief. Based on what I believe is fair, I have the right to be angry about the disappointments in my life and to stay angry for as long as I feel like it. I have the right to express my anger in whatever way is natural for me. Negative. Right belief. Because the Lord is sovereign over me and I trust him with my life, I have yielded my rights to him. My human disappointments are now God's appointments to increase my faith and develop his character in me. I choose to not be controlled by anger, but to use anger to motivate me to do whatever God wants me to do. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. 1 Peter 1, 6-7 Steps to Solution on that, day, on that hot, dry day, Moses' frustration reached a boiling point. He had led more than a million of his people through the vast desert. But for all his efforts, they continually complained questioning his leadership and blaming him for their plight. If only we had died when our brothers fell dead, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to this terrible place? Numbers 20, three, to, three through five. Once again, the Israelites had no water. Earlier in their journey, God had miraculously provided water by instructing Moses to strike a rock with his staff. When Moses obeyed a stream of water, enough for all Israel poured out of the rock. That's in Exodus 17, 1 through 6. At this point, God intended to perform a similar miracle, but this time he told Moses to simply speak to, not strike, a rock. However, Moses was so frustrated that his anger boiled over. Rather than speaking to the rock, he struck it forcefully twice. Gushing water is what God intended. Gushing anger is not what God intended. As a result, God disciplined his chosen leader by not allowing him to lead his people into the promised land. See Numbers 20, 1 through 12. At times, are you like Moses? Do you sometimes allow hurt, injustice, fear, or frustration to make you furious? If so, what should you do when you get angry? The Bible says, refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. That's in Psalm 37, 8. Here's a key verse to memorize. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, for man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. James 1, 19 to 20. Key passages to read and reread. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Do not give the devil a foothold. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it might may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. 
Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, just as in Christ, God forgave you. So this is God's analysis of anger from verses 26 through 32. Anger is appropriate at certain times. Anger must be resolved or it becomes sinful. Anger can be curtailed. Anger, if handled inappropriately, can be used by Satan. Anger, if prolonged, gives ground to Satan. Anger can lead to corrupt, unwholesome, degrading talk. Anger can grieve the Holy Spirit. Anger can be eliminated. Anger becomes sin when it results in bitterness. Anger must be eradicated before it turns into rage. Anger must be forfeited before it leads to fighting. Anger must be stopped before it becomes slander. Anger must be mastered before it becomes malicious. Anger can be conquered through compassion. That's a good one. Anger can be broken through forgiveness. That's a good one too. Analyze the amount of your anger. Have you seriously considered how much anger you're holding inside your heart and holding toward others? On the next page, draw a pie-shaped circle. Divide the pie into segments and put a name inside each segment to represent the amount of anger you feel toward the different people in your life, past or present. We've done a sample anger pie for you. As you think about your own anger, consider what the Bible sa says. You must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips in Colossians 3.8. So this is a good exercise. I'm going to do this after um, this video. So this is the pie. So what you do, the example is they've made a pie and then kind of like, where does most of their anger reside? So this person had teacher, father, neighbor, sister, God, uncle, grandmother. So this is kind of like how much your anger is for those people. So that's a really good way to, I think, kind of analyze who we're angry at and um, just ask God to help us with it. Okay. So how do you analyze your anger? It will help. It will prove helpful to stop and ask yourself some questions each time you experience anger. Analyzing what is going on can help move you from subjectively to objectively, from being controlled by your anger to benefiting from it. As you practice patience and utilize understanding, you will find yourself at a point where you can use your anger for God's purposes and prevent it from leading you into sin. In Proverbs 14, 29, it says, A patient man has great understanding, but a quick-tempered man displays folly. Here's some questions. What triggered my anger? How am I expressing my anger? What are the true inner desires motivating my anger? What is my view of God in the midst of this anger-producing situation? How should I respond to God and others in the midst of this situation? What can I learn from this experience that will help me handle my anger better in the future? And the Bible verse says in Proverbs 16, 32, better a patient man than a warrior, a man who controls his temper than one who takes a city. So that is where we are going to end it today. Be sure to subscribe if you're not already because we are going to be continuing talking about anger next time on page 38. We're going to get into are we harboring anger towards God? And I think this is going to be good. So please leave your comments and thoughts down below. Are you enjoying this book? Are you enjoying diving into these emotions with me? What have you discovered? Um, what are you working on? And give this video a thumbs up, please, so I know that this is good content to do on YouTube. And I will see you next time. Bye!